born and raised in a little town like Clio. Clio. You know where that is? I do know where Clio is. That's between Dennisville and Dillon. Yeah. 87 miles from Myrtle Beach. We went to OCS from Boston, Massachusetts. We got our basic training in anti-aircraft guns, 90 meter guns, and we pulled out and went to Boston, Massachusetts, and I stayed up there until spring of 43. And I graduated from OCS on the 18th of November, 43. They sent me right back to Zurich. <laughs> right back to Fort Stewart? Yes, sir. There's Camp Stewart then. Yeah. So when did you... It was 55 miles across that plantation. So when did you, when they ship you over in the... And the, well, you went to Europe, right? Yes, I went to Europe. I was in the 3rd Army. Patton's Army? Patton, yes. Sir. Did you ever meet him? Yes, sir. What did you think of Patton? George C. Pat. Well, I kind of pr proved him his theory. You know, a moving target is a lot harder to hit than one standing still. Yeah, I agree with that. I saw him twice while I, uh, one time when we were, you know, fixing to jump off in the attack, this German fighter started strafing us and we fired a round into his nose and knocked the plane down. And he came up and said, boy, this is a job well done. And then uh, when Mr. Roosevelt died, he called, he, uh, he pulled the, the division back into uh, an assembly area for 30 minutes for, for respect over Mr. Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. And then y'all went right back at, it, back at it. Back at it, yes, sir. Were you involved in the Battle of the Bulge? No, sir. I went into combat right after the Bulge. After the ball, yes, sir. and we still had fighting to do. Before. Oh yes, sir. But I, we were we were moving on into Germany then, weren't we? Yes, sir. A little village, <laughs> and uh, had this German coming right straight at me with a fixed bayonet, and he must have been fifty or sixty feet in front of me, and uh, I had a car. I had a carbine. I wouldn't authorize a, a rifle. I shot it. He kept right on moving. And the sergeant right next to me says, I got him, Lieutenant. I was dropping down on my knee to reach for that 45. And I said, I got him. He hit him in the shoulder, knocked him flat of his. Yeah. Flat of his And his gun went up in the air. And after we forgot to clean it out, the little sounds. We went back and examined him. I said, hey, I know I hit that fellow. And I hit him right above his navel. Yep. And he hit him in the shoulder. With the, uh, was he still alive? M1. I don't know. Uh, uh, because the last time I saw him, he was laying on, on the bench waiting for the meat wagon to come pick him up. Mm. Mm. That was some tough times. So, Yes, sir, that's, that's when the good Lord took care of me. Well, after Joe Nero ordered us out of Midwater into the country, uh, we went, went out somewhere. You know, we had a building full of German gas masks. And uh, we uh, put the German gas mask and stacked them out in the, in the field. So I took those and two enlisted men and I made a shave tail hut. I got a picture of that. Uh, what I did, I took the case, cases of brand new uh, German gas masks and used it for the walls. And I took a uh, tarp off of the half track and had them put it on top, top of it. Then I went down to pasture and cut some poles and, and, uh, and uh, for a fence feeling and made a head, I made a bed for the other second lieutenant and I, there's two of us that slept in this. It's about, 20, about I guess, 12, 16 feet by, wide and about 20 feet long. I, I got a, a picture of that. So you slept on a bed made out of gas masks? Oh, you know, that's walls, right. Oh, 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 the buildings oh, oh, made out of field gas Field fencing, you call it. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, field fencing, you call it. You know, I'd be a second lieutenant. <laughs> We got a hold of the detail. So the company commander uh, told me to report to the battalion headquarters 
with an enlist uh, with a first aid man and five enlisted men. And I said, what, what, what's the detail? I don't know. Just report to the battalion commander. I reported to the battalion commander, and he made me a train commander. Here, a, load, a train load of displaced persons from Mittwein all the way back to Paris, France. On the way going in, the, oh, we, we had a live track a lot. Two young girls were sitting in a boxcar and got their knees and legs all scratched up and hurt up. And uh, we stopped a train and found the doctor and we went up the hill. And one of, one of the ladies on the train could speak five different languages fluently. So uh, we carried him up, and this doctor refused to treat him. Uh, so I opened my field jacket and showed him that 45 I had. I said, <laughs> you tell him, I give him 30 seconds to treat these ladies, I'll fill his mouth full of lead. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about a, a big fat doctor moving. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs>
lieutenant? I'm second lieutenant. Second lieutenant? Yes, sir. My left shoulder, my uh, collarbone bro uh, broken, they set it back, it's overlapping like that. And I, my shoulder blade was broken. They picked me up, I went to a field hospital, and from a field hospital to a hospital in Belgium, and then they flew us into Paris and put us on a converted hospital plane. And I uh, <coughs> flew back to Regoria. And from Regaria to uh, uh, Washington, Washington, Bethesda. We went. Uh, we went out uh, in Georgia, Atlanta. Went to a few Atlanta. hospitals in, yeah. in Atlanta. I think the Ford Motor Company has that property in now. What'd you come out as? First of them. I got out as quick as I could. <laughs> <laughs> they sent me for uh, on the retirement board. They wanted to send me down in Florida for six months yeah. to, to, to recuperate, and I had enough time, four years of it, that I, I could get out. So, I, well, did did you get that Purple Heart for the casualty and all that? Right. Why did you live in Norway? He got married. <laughs> was like, that was my first wife's home. Oh, uh, so Faith Faith grew up in Norway. Right. And I, I, as soon as I got out of the army, uh, her, her father wanted me to go in business with him, and uh, I did. And then when we took it, his youngest son in later, and he passed away in 1950. And then Covington and I. Uh, Uh -oh. Who passed away in 1950? Face, face yeah. Dad. Oh, okay. 1950. Oh, I think he's, he's, I hear Carmel. He, he was 50 years old. Oh. So Nanny was a widow for nearly 50 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I traveled over the state of Georgia a good bit. Oh, you knew uh, Mr. Uh, in Augusta. Yes, in Whitney. Yeah, I knew some Whitney's over there. They had a warehouse in there. Yeah, I, I knew of those people. I knew some of the Graniteville people. And you know, Barry, Barry uh, had closed up. He's re he retired. You know, he's in a warehouse business. And uh, he retired about three months ago. I didn't know them well, but I knew of them. You know, yes. we, had, we had a lot of textile plants around. Where right, I grew absolutely. Up in Augusta. You know, yes. you had Graniteville, and you had I can't think of all the names. They all they all closed down now. They yes. all gone away. You know, uh, over at Graniteville, they got one had one of the best cotton warehouses in the in the business. Mm -hmm. Real modern, real modern. Yeah. Another old bill of cotton with a machine and carried and put it in position. We had to put it in the city. Are we growing much cotton in the country now? This year, the acreage is way down. But we're growing, not, you're talking about South Carolina or just anywhere in the country? In the, in the United States? Yeah. South Carolina acreage is down. Why is it down with the price doubled? Well, people couldn't make any money out of it. But they couldn't help it. And you need See that. Uh, <laughs> well, the farmer usually doesn't make any well, money. Most well, farmer this farmer year. Farmer has uh, one of those all work. 800. Uh, 800 pounds of length of the acre, or better, 880 Well, they didn't make, but a, a good farmer could uh, make them. When I was farmer, meals of the acre was all you had made. Yeah. And you can't make any money at 500 pounds. Sure. But that's a good way to lose money, is I'm going to lose money and start farming. <laughs>